This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. All right, let's welcome in Tom. And Tom, good morning. Start out with something hot. Keytron Jackson hits the portal as of yesterday. I kind of thought he was going to be the number one wide receiver heading into this next season. Evidently not. Kind of your thoughts on the move. Hey, good morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm not sure Keytron's thought process there, and that's probably one that the Razorback coaches uh, would like to talk to him about and say, hey, man, your role's going up. But maybe Keytron felt like, as uh, the top recruit in the class a couple years ago, that his star would have already gone up by now. Um, you know, it, it was a it was a good receiving core. Um, the fact that Jaden Hazelwood and Matt Landers and Warren Thompson had already had, you know, I mean, they were veterans and had bigger numbers in their careers. Um, and Keytron played a more secondary role to those guys um, when he was at his best. I mean, the touchdown against Texas A&M, he had a touchdown against Ole Miss on a just a great catch. So we know what his, his upper ceiling is like. We know he's a physical guy. And I can't but help but think he could have been the top receiver next year. Maybe he felt like things were trending in a different direction and younger guys like Satania and Mbake and maybe some other guys he felt like he were coming through the portal. Uh, so you don't know what all the motivations are, but perhaps he feels like he can go somewhere else and, and get more targets. I mean, here's the, here's the truth of today's football, and it's happening in the NFL as well. Uh, there's more run running going on, uh, and teams understand they have to have more balance and have to be able to run in short yardage situations and, and not have to chunk it around all the time. And receivers are going to be called on the block. And he's he's a good one there. So it's a loss for the Razorbacks for certain. Tom, you kind of brought up the coaching angle. I heard Coach Pittman talking about losing Jaden to the draft. Keytron was going to fill into that role. Do you think the coaching staff was caught off guard by this move? Well, it's tough to say. Maybe maybe he had expressed some uh, concerns or whatever to him, and Sam felt compelled to say, we're moving him to the slot, like as a, as a gesture of, this is a good move for you. Maybe Keytron did not want to be in the slot. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Um, so I would like to think that Kenny Guyton and Sam Pittman have, have talked to him about, hey, man, your role's going up. And, and I don't know if, if things are going to change or what, but, um, you know, he seemed like a great kid. We talked to him several times during the course of his two years. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't like to lose guys who are considered your top signee in, in certain classes. How much is NIL, in your opinion, I know we can't put a, a number on it or percentage, but what role is NIL playing in all of these guys going into the portal and what was 600 or so entered on day one? Where's NIL's role on, <laughs> uh, on all of this? Wow. Well, you know, it's a factor, and I guess it's not talked about openly a lot. I mean, certain coaches and some of the biggest in the business have hinted about what, what the game is turning into with that. Um, but I can't help but think that, you know, they hear through various channels, hey, you got X amount waiting for you here if you transfer to this school. And we know that a lot of this stuff is, is being done or talked about contemplated, you know, basically as soon as the portal opens, there's stuff going on. So, I mean, hey, uh, was it Lane Kiffin who called or, and Nick Saban free agency? Well, that's kind of what it feels like now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you just wonder about all the other ripples, you know, from your APR score and how many guys leave eligible to, you know, what becomes a bowl rosters and the significance of, you know, you just look at the Liberty Bowl and, you know, who is Arkansas going to have available? I guess we'll find out together in the coming weeks, but – um, the, the ripples off of, of what they've done with the portal and NIL and all of this, uh, starting to see the consequences of it. Yes, we are. And some would call it like oldsters might call it collateral damage, you know, <laughs> and put it in a negative context. But think about this, Tommy, uh, time might not remember, but Hey, freshmen couldn't play up until the 1970s. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact year. 72, but I think 72, like you signed as a freshman. You didn't play. I mean, and, and in a way, there's a, a process of getting bigger, um, getting, you know, getting your school stuff situated and learning the college way of life. And then you came in as a sophomore. Well, that went away. And then, you know, then the draft rules changed. But 
the the rapidity of the change right now is is slightly alarming to to you know traditionalists I would say, um, and also the changes are in, in coming in ways that maybe not be good for the game. I mean, yeah. when I hear talk of player unions in college, it makes me sick because I don't I don't like the sound of that. But who knows? We may be heading that way. Yeah, and I, see the APR score matters anymore for for your program. What nine twenty five is the benchmark. You know, it, the, the the retention point and the eligibility point. Now, I wonder how all of this factors with so much movement around the sport because you obviously lose the retention point. I I just wonder what mm-hmm. the effect of that's going to be on programs. Can it's, it's not just an Arkansas thing. It's it's across the board. Right, Tommy. Well, I think the obvious answer right there is the NCAA is having to change uh, at such a, a pace to keep up with everything, and they will have to change the way they determine that because everybody's doing it. You know, there's not some pristine school out there that retains all their players. And players are leaving all kinds of schools. Um, and, <laughs> you know, if you're not going to start having lower scores for everybody, you're going to have to change the way they they do those determinations. And, um, you know, of all the committees and the boards and stuff they have at the NCAA, um some some board's going to have to come together to make the adjustments there as well. And I bring that up because, as as we know, and someone in the audience may not know, that your APR score, if it's below the benchmark, what, three years or so many so many years in a row, your sport can be withheld from the postseason. And I look at Eric Musman's program, you know, uh, you know, only two returning players on, on, on their roster, you know, and you feel like there's going to be more turnover because of the quality of players. You, you just look at this football situation, at some point, you know, star programs are going to be on that list of, hey, you're not eligible for the NCAA tournament. You're not eligible for a bowl game because of APR, because of all this portal stuff. Yeah, but you know that every school's, um, the uh, academic, the um, uh, eligibility side of it is working to keep all those guys eligible, you know. So, <laughs> uh, but but that does place a premium on that as well, as long as the current standards are in place. I would uh, highly recommend if you're about to attend college, knowing an athlete and getting the quote unquote athletes' notes. They're uh, they're very vital when it comes to tests. We're talking with Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Whole Hog Sports. <laughs> Here this morning, I'm just being honest, man. Personal experience. Uh, let's shift it up to basketball. Nick Smith being back. There's been a lot of hype surrounding this young man, number one college prospect in the country. Didn't have a great first game. A lot better in the second game. How much is his presence going to impact this team moving forward, Tom? Well, it's good that he's getting this playing time in now before conference play starts, even though we're, we're zooming right toward it, because you can see how it changed the dynamics of substitution. I mean, Eric Musselman flat out admitted, like, wow, uh, he was uh, discombobulated in the last game with his substitution. And, you know, San Jose State hung with Arkansas for a while, but they just did not have the depth of roster. And uh, Arkansas really turned it on in the second half of that game. So. You know, there's a feel-good aspect to, okay, we had a great second half. You know, Nick Smith didn't play a ton in the second half. But you can see he's got a silky smooth game. Uh, He's got a nice floater, like floating bank shots and the full variety. Um, He's going to cause defenses to play a little bit differently, which will open things up for other players as well. Uh, Not shy to shoot, but that's the way scorers and, and guys of his skill set are not afraid to shoot uh nice that he had a three-pointer with his his first field goal um but yeah it's going to change things and um guys like devo who did not score in the last game are going to have to find their ways to contribute uh distributing and then i i think his dribble drives are and in transition are some of his best and obviously defense uh but is where he's going to have to contribute as well but man when you look at the different ways they can score, counsel, the, the one-on-one stuff he did late in the Troy game was just remarkable. And now you've got a guy who can score from the, the perimeter, the wings, and, and drive as well. So a lot of talent here. I think when you talk about guards with Razorback basketball, everyone goes straight to Todd Day and Lee Mayberry. Now, I know there's others, but when you think about duos, that's what people point to. Tom, this team's got a trio. How does that cohesion work with Black, Council, and Smith as they continue to figure that out moving forward? And Sidney Moncrief (laughs) and Ron Brewer and the triplets. 
Um, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's a question that we're going to have to see resolved. I mean, they have what they do in practice. But when it comes down to the game time, we're going to have to see that work out. I mean, Anthony Black, think about without his big scoring and, and all his contributions in Hawaii, what, what might have happened. So now with Nick Smith, a guy who's going to handle the ball a good amount, um, Anthony Black has to find ways to play off of that as well. So it's just going to be a work in progress. But, but the one thing I think Razorback fans should take heart in is we know – that Razorback teams under Musselman have found ways to do that and peak at the right time. And so, in other words, you know, sit back, enjoy the show. There's going to be some bumps along the way as Nick Smith transitions to a, a stronger and stronger role and what it means for the other guys. But I, I think we can, I think we can say that, you know, it's going to work itself out in a in a proper way for the Razorbacks. You brought up Delf, Moncrief, and Ron Brewer. I mean, that's a it's a legendary hog players right there. So what does this unit have to do? Those three guys to, are they, can they ever get to that point? Is it a final four? Like what, what, what are those three well, guards play long to enough do? to get to that point? So. <laughs> that was my response, Tommy. Dare I say stick together for a while. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, this year could be a fantastic year. If, if they, if they shoot well in big games, if they defend well, um, but it, this is going to be a brief time period with this trio, y'all. I mean, we just have to face the facts. That's the modern game. <laughs> Enjoy the year. Um, hey, the, mm-hmm. the first net rankings came out. Arkansas was 25th, I think fifth in the SEC. Uh, what were your overall th- thoughts about Arkansas's ranking and then uh, just kind of where things are amongst the conference and then nationally? Yeah, um, strength of schedule, obviously. You know, I think San Jose was picked very near the bottom of their their league. Um, and Louisville is is like an albatross right now. Louisville, Louisville's that uh, you know going back to COVID. Louisville's that that program that's got COVID, and it, now now everybody's trying to figure out whether they were around them or not. And was I within fifteen feet of Louisville for more than was, was I within eight feet for fifteen minutes of Louisville? That's what everybody's trying uh, to figure out because Louisville is third for they're three sixty one or something like that, third from the bottom. Uh, it's an amazement to me, Tom, that Arkansas is even twenty five, even though they beat Louisville. Just they were within, they we were within uh, fifth we were around there for more than fifteen minutes within six feet we got a problem we played Louisville you know yeah I actually kind of feel bad for them their first three losses were by one point against you know lower level teams all at home one point and then they go to Hawaii and holy smokes they got shellacked in all three games um, it's not going well and you know the negativity that can surround a program especially one that uh, the fans and boosters feel like they should be a national tender every year so um i'm i'm glad i'm not covering that situation but yeah um they need to win some games to help <laughs> arkansas's net recover i don't know if we can count on that but uh yeah i think arkansas by virtue of that you just look at the the teams that are ahead of them and i didn't expect mississippi state to be uh like number five i mean we talk about all the great teams in tennessee and auburn and bama and arkansas and kentucky and uh, i don't remember mississippi state entering a lot of those conversations but they're they're there in the net rankings right now yeah, I mean, I, I think aren't they still undefeated? And they're yeah. pl- they're playing really good defense, so it, it it will all shake out. And I know the Nets have a big impact on NCAA tournament bids, but um, I think these things will shake out. And you know, when you think of the the really good teams in the SEC, <clears throat> there's going to be some teams that lose games. I mean, Auburn came here number one and lost a thriller to, to Arkansas, and Arkansas is going to have a target on its back all season. All right. What's the one place you're going to make sure you eat when, while in Memphis? Oh, I have not thought that through, Tommy. Oh. I think you guys think about food more than me. Well, um, but that's the, the first but thing, the, Ty. When Ty's yeah. selecting a bowl side or a NCAA pod that he'd like to be in, it, it's always about, well, they got good ribs up there in Kansas City. That's why he wants to go to Kansas City. I heard that. Well, I know Ron is right around the corner from the media hotel, so that's that's a walking <laughs> distance, so. We'll probably check that one off our list. Well, that's always a good one. All right, Tom, we'll talk to you later this week on Thursday. Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB. 
MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts. 